Traveling will sometimes force things upon you that you've never expected. Without calling the world unfair, you have to manage your response to the world. The drama will come later. For now, we're driving northeast of the famed Andean city, Cusco, to visit a natural marvel, a type of place we had no clue was even possible to exist. It's no coincidence this badass defender is following us. We're traveling with some new friends, and later we would find their companionship to be invaluable. What you're seeing is a salt mine, one that still uses the ancient techniques of its forefathers. But where the salt comes from is an underground spring. The caretakers have carefully diverted the salt river into these terraced pools. We'd never seen anything like it. As the river flows, the salt settles, and they bag it and sell it. And I've never seen this much salt in my entire life. Oh, we got little salt packets. A souvenir. From the salt mine. Edible souvenir. This is the funniest thing when she handed it to us. She was like, it's salt. <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, I know it's salt. <laughs> it's salt mine. That's awesome. With new cooking ingredients and an expanded perspective of the presence of salt rivers, our curious adventure continues. One amazing thing about Latin America is there seems to never be more than a week without some kind of celebration. We think today might have something to do with the Rio Carnival in Brazil, but they don't need much of a reason to party. And it's awesome. Unless somehow it was absolutely essential. And a donkey! Donkey's so festive. <laughs> Here, you can't see it. There's people dancing in the street. I can see it. <laughs> Look at the guy with the with the boobs. <laughs> I think this is the mummering version. Back into the dizzying elevations above 4,000 meters, we would hope to take our own famous photograph of the mountains of seven colors.
Overlander spot. How do we know? Because there's another Overlander. Yep. Ah, focus, you damn thing. There you go. I need what? Do you need a hair elastic? No, I need to wear an adventure hat today. Okay. Early start. And there was still one tour bus that beat us. This is a crazy little shelf road. did we know, and to our possible dismay, that the most colorful thing on these rainbow mountains would be our clothing. Clearly there's a difference between the on-season and the off-season. We're starting to recognize that more and more. Sunday's first toe. Not, not the best look. Okay, so we're gonna try and bump start? Yeah, we're gonna try and bump start. We're just gonna tow to the flat. Are you able to try and get the windshield wipers? Yeah, I'm just getting the, the tow off so I can see you guys. Enough hill to bump start. I'm just gonna break a bit to keep tension on the cable, but you keep going slow. Roger. Okay, we're just gonna wait for this van. Hopefully this works. I think what happened, it, we like, it didn't start the first time and then we flooded it, and I think the spark plugs got uh, soaked. So if this doesn't work, we're gonna have to pull the spark plugs and dry them out. Bump start, we're gonna try four low. Here. Wait, there's one more white truck coming. We're good. We're alive, brother. We are alive. Uh, from now on, we only park on hills. <laughs> well, that's the uh, first no start of the whole trip. First time we've ever had to get recovered. Just say it's pretty good odds. I was hoping it would be zero, but uh, 
Man, fuel fuel issues just have really, really kind of plagued us. I think, I, I don't really think we have a good fuel pump. That new fuel pump we put in the tank, I think is still, I don't know if it was a knockoff, but it's super loud and I, I don't trust it. So I'm pretty sure what happened is when it didn't start and we kept trying to start it, it was over fueling, soaked the spark plugs, the spark plugs got wet. Um, I think that's why the bump start were super easy. But uh, yeah, I have uh, very little faith in our fuel pump right now, which kind of sucks. <laughs> it's a good thing we're traveling with friends now. Yeah, exactly. Looks like this Piaje has been blown up. <laughs> I don't think the locals wanted to no pay the tolls anymore. <laughs> Well, this is what it's supposed to look like. Bars looked a little different. Our lunch stop reminded us of what we missed at the Rainbow Mountains. And Stacy made a new friend. Cusco, the meeting point for millions of travelers who come to visit the spectacular Machu Picchu, one of the seven wonders of the world. That's why we're here, too. Except there's a problem. You can't actually drive to Machu Picchu, and protesters have blocked the railroad used for transportation. From our limited sources, we've been told the business and tourism side of the ancient city has changed hands, and the locals are not happy. Tear gas, police presence, and protesters were the real deterrent for us. That, and with the timeline of our next adventure on the horizon, we couldn't sit around and wait for things to change. Thankfully, for everyone else, they did. But that was two days after we'd left the city. The good news? Machu Picchu isn't going anywhere, and we will add it to the growing list of reasons to return. Nevertheless, we enjoyed exploring the city. This is the San Pedro Central Market, filled with everything you'll ever need, never need, and much more. It's funny, you know. We've somehow missed the most famed vistas in Peru, yet we feel more fulfilled than ever a country worthy of reading the second page. Machu Picchu, the Rainbow Mountains, Lima, Cusco, they've all earned their popularity. However, venturing further, choosing to take the option B road instead of A, choosing to buy produce from the farmer himself, which shows to not wonder what it would be like to take the five minute slower route from Google. We stuck our spoon in a different flavor than most choose and came out with our new favorite taste. Peru surprised us with the cards it hides in its back pocket. A very easy country to agree to come back to. Our last drive through the Andes would mark the beginning of perhaps our biggest endeavor on this trip so far.
are not car smart. No. <laughs> that is so crazy. Just a giant wall of green. And then some houses. With houses in the middle. Wow. Well, that's down from 4,700 meters to 800 meters in one shot. And now we're back in the jungle. From mountains to jungle, from less oxygen to more oxygen than one needs, down, 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 to the land where the beautiful flowers distract you only briefly, while you become a feast for bugs and a sponge for sweat. Because of missing Machu Picchu, and that we're now in a convoy, we've changed our travel plans entirely. We'll be embarking on an expedition that will challenge us in ways like never before. I'm walking around in the blistering heat of Porto something, looking for some things that we need for this adventure. I need a fan, I need some glue, I need a citronella candle, I need a mosquito net. You might be able to guess where we're going, but uh, oh man, it's hot. One of the most annoying things about this part of the world is that everything has a different store. Like if you need a broom, there's a store for brooms. If you need a pot, there's a store for pots. But if you need several different things, you've got to go to 10 different stores. And if you don't know the word for that thing in Spanish, it makes it a lot more difficult. Well, two hours later, after that last clip, we found what we were looking for, glue. Pringles, bug spray, a second fan, a rooster, and mosquito net. After that, we drove three and a half hours and almost 300 kilometers to where we are now. And that is probably where we're gonna leave it because this is the start of our next adventure. We are about to cross into country number 13 and I have a feeling this is going to be our craziest adventure yet. I hope by now we've earned your subscription. We're already layered with sweat and red mud of a new country. We'll see you next time. Now this.